Everybody, can you see me clearly on here? Am I clear? I feel like I'm not. How many of y'all can see me clearly on here? Am I clear? You can see my face clearly. Are we blurry or no? We not blurry. Am I blurry on here? No. You can see me clearly on here, right? Everybody, blessings to you. So I'm clear. How many of y'all, if you see clear, say clear. Now, this is a very powerful teaching. And it's very classified. Nice to see all of you all. Love you all in Jesus' name. Man, I ask. <laughs> I'm going to tell you how the Lord works so crazily. I asked Jesus today. I said, Jesus, I wish they had some shorts. <laughs> I wish they had some shorts that match my shirt. You know what I'm saying? So watch this here. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, I begin to think about it, all right? So so then I heard the Lord tell me, he said, son, I do got shorts. <laughs> I said, Jesus, where the shorts at? You, you is the miracle worker. You could just bring the shorts right here. You're like, we don't got to do none of that. And then Jesus, he said, son, I want you to go here. And so took a shower, everything, you know what I'm saying? Some of y'all don't believe in water. That's why you can't hear from God because that's where you're going to hear from God at. You got to get some water on you. If you, if you ain't going to put no water on you, if you're going if you going, if you going to smell like yesterday's boyfriend, you're not going to, to, to prosper in hearing the voice of God. All right, you got to have water. Water is the word, right? The washing of the word, but there's the washing uh, you know, and the washing in itself brings <laughs> the washing in itself <laughs> brings an increase of, of tranquility in hearing the voice. All right. All right. So so I heard the Lord saying. I got him. So I went to the place that the Lord told me to go. And I found the shorts. <laughs> Listen, hey, hey, here's the crazy thing. Here's the, here's the crazy thing. Not only did I find the shorts, but I found, <laughs> I found another shorts that's the same. Listen. Y'all ain't gonna grab me. Watch this here. Watch this here. I got listen. I got double. Watch this here. And then there was a brother in the line that looked like DMX, and they had me skip him. They listen. Look at these here. I found some more. They brought some more shorts to me. 
here's the wild thing. When I went inside there, the lady knew me. She knew me from my broadcast. Huh? You understand? Every place that God sends you, there is favor waiting for you. Write that down. Always rem remember that. Every place that God sends you, there is favor waiting for you. If God did not send you, there's no favor. If God sends you, there's favor. And favor means that there's provision. And provision means that there's substance. And substance means that there's peace. And peace means that there's justice. And justice means that there's victory. And victory means that there's a divine connection awaiting there that's going to take you into your next level of goodness and mercy. Every place that God sends you, there is favor waiting for you. You don't want to be anywhere that God did not send you. Because even though the pleasures of sin is just for a season, after that season is over, there's no provision. There's, and the Bible said in Proverbs 13, 15, that the way of the transgressor is hard. You know what that means? It means that if you do your own thing, it might be easy for a moment, but it's going to catch up to you and it, the difficulty is going to arise. The hardship is going to arise. And there's going to be no peace. Now, saints, let me just say this. I'm talking to you about something very powerful here. Now, it's amazing that God had me wear champion clothes because we are champions. Everybody on this line, you're a champion. Today, I asked Lucy, I said, Lucy, that's all you got. I thought you was bad. The world told me, that you still kill and destroy. I said, Lucy, you disappointed me. Satan, you disappointed me. Because I heard preachers say that you was powerful. You disappointed me greatly. I'm disappointed. I thought, I thought that you had the power to, to, to do what you do. I thought that you was a destroyer. I thought that you was a defeater. I thought I thought that I thought that you had to got to have a got it. You disappointed. Saints Muhammad Ali used to be in a fight, right? And I used I remember there was a season in my life Jesus told me I want you to watch Muhammad Ali. It used to be me and my mother. My mother didn't even watch no sports. My mother said, the Lord told me the same thing. I said, huh? Well, you was a woman. What? <laughs> Don't you talk back to me now, boy. Don't you not talk back to me now, boy. I'm not talking back, mother. I just was stating facts. You're talking back. You're being fresh. <laughs> Saints. If you got an older school mother, no, nah, her mother's not old school. But if you got a mother that's older in years, they you gonna hear them say, "Stop being fresh. Watch your mouth. Don't be fresh." <laughs> like, like I'm supposed to be fresh now. You told me to be fresh now. Like, don't be fresh with me. So, so me and my mother were watching Muhammad Ali. Now, Muhammad Ali had something that he did. In a fight, like I, I watched Muhammad Ali so many times. Do you know that it looked like he lost the fight? Do you know that Muhammad Ali would let them, he would get beat up. He had fights with Joe Frazier, like they would knock him. Like, now since I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna pick on Muhammad. I think that he died, but you remember he used to have that Parkinson's thing. See, all them hits, they took a toll. I just want you to say, I, I want to say this, and this a wisdom though as well. Don't let yourself get hit and not get healed. Because it might not look like it's affecting you today, but it'll take a toll tomorrow. What I'm telling you is that take the time to build up your spirit and build up your soul. Because sometimes you go through your life acting like you got hit and you good. And you never get restored. 
The Bible says he restored my soul, Psalm 23. So what I'm saying is, if you hear wrong words spoken to you, if you see wrong things, if you hear wrong things, if you have wrong conversations, if you meet wrong people, if you have a bad experience, that bad experience might not seem like it's affecting you, but it'll catch up to you later on. Muhammad Ali used to get hit, but he was good. But then when he got older, he had what we call Parkinson's disease, which made him shake all the time. So it looked like he was good, but he never got healed. Let me tell you something. You can be good and never be whole. What I'm saying is the backlash not stopping you, but yet it's still lingering to take you out in the future. So mentally, it's your job to feed your mind, your soul, your emotions, what it needs to prosper. That's your assignment. It's your job to make sure that you give your soul the nutrients, the, 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 the wisdom, the word, the joy. Listen, do you know that joy is a healer of your soul? There's two major anointings that I have on my ministry that Jesus told me is his wisdom and his joy. These are two major anointings. See, I move into healing and prophecy and all those other things, but those are not my two major. I just move into those things because off of uh, off of the fact that I mastered wisdom and joy. Because wisdom is a door into the prophetic. Wisdom is instructions, and you know that a prophet give you instructions. Wisdom is also knowing whether or not to speak a prophecy. Wisdom is knowing who to speak the prophecy to. Remember, Jesus only spoke about his resurrection to three. Peter, James, and John was the only one that saw Moses and Elijah. Bartholomew, you never saw Moses and Elijah, nor did they know that Moses and Elijah even existed on that mountain with Jesus when he got transfigured. So Peter, James, and John was the carriers of the mystery. When Jesus picked you to carry the mystery, don't drop it. Do you got oil leaks? Because, saints, I remember one time I had a vehicle and I would put oil in it all the time. And then the when I went to the mechanic, the mechanic said there's no oil in the car. Come to find out when they did an investigation, they did that tune, uh, like tune-up thing. They found out that the, the car had oil leaks. So it wasn't that the oil didn't come, but the oil leaked out because there was nothing to carry the oil or protect the oil when it got to the car. So the car was receiving what it needed, but there was no protection when it received what it needed. And so it just slipped right out. That can happen to you very well that you have oil leaks, that God supplies you with what you need, but the supply is not protected. And wisdom protects your supply. Faithfulness protects your supply. And consistency, diligence protects what God supplies. It is the protection of the oil so the oil don't leak out. Saints, do you know that King Saul had oil leaks? Because the Bible said that Samuel took him up on the mountain and anointed him with oil, but he still found himself not killing all the Amalekites. What was going on? There was oil leaks. Adam had oil leaks. God had blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it. I've given you power over all the fish of the sea, the birds, the fowl of the air. And every creeping thing, he received the power to rule and reign, but there was no, there was no, so the oil leaked right out. He received the oil, but the oil leaked right out. Peter, James, and John received the anointing, but you see Peter. While Jesus is in the Garden of Gethsemane, he falls asleep. Why is he falling asleep in the midst of the Garden of Gethsemane when Jesus is telling him to wake up? Because he has oil leaks. Watch this. Did you know the fact that Jesus told him to wake up? He had the anointing not to sleep. 
So the so anything that Jesus tells you to do, you have the anointing to do it. So when Jesus said, watch and pray and don't go to sleep, unless you fall into temptation, he had the power not to go to sleep. So he chose not to go to sleep. He chose to go to sleep. That was his will. He had the power over his will not to go to sleep. But he had oil leaks. So the oil was leaking out. Every time he, he was in another realm of losing oil. That's why when Jesus was being crucified, he denied him three times because of the oil leaks. See, the oil had already leaked out. He had the power to move as a disciple. He had the power to not deny Jesus. But the oil was leaking out when Jesus was telling him, watch and pray. And he kept falling asleep every time he... Listen, saints, I watched the movie last night. And, uh, what, 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 man? I watched the movie. It was called Desolation. Thank you, Holy Ghost. The movie was called. The movie was called Desolation. You understand? It was called Desolation. Now, here's what happened in the movie. It was a woman and then there was Jen. Jen. And Jen was in the movie. It's not a real movie if a Jen not in there. <laughs> Now, look at this here. Look at this here. Now, in the movie, here's what took place. Jen and her friend and her friend's son was inside the woods. At the beginning of the movie, her son saw a man in black watching from afar. And he waved at the man and the man wouldn't wave. The man just stared at him. All right. In the movie... Jen and her friend are in the woods and they see this man appear again. Jen's friend wants to go confront him, which is very divine. You can't defeat a thought that you won't confront. You can't defeat an emotion that you won't confront. But Jen told her not to confront him. All right. So they kept on moving. When they started moving, the man started chasing after them spontaneously. OK, I'm in I'm in the movie called Desolation. This not <laughs> uh, turn to Desolation, chapter five, verse four. Who got it? Desolations, chapter five, verse four. There's two of y'all on here. I need you to turn to Desolation, chapter five, verse four. Uh, Claus B. In the movie, when they started running, the man started running with them. Now, here's the crazy thing. They went go hide and the man lost him for a brief moment. So Jen's friend looks up from a rock and she peeks at him. He doesn't see her. And then all of a sudden. He hears her. So he sees her when she peeks or when she goes back down into hiding, but he does not let her know. After he sees her, he plays it off like he does it. But he's stalking her. Now watch this here. After he stalks her, they look and they, they search for him, but he's nowhere to be found. They don't see him anywhere. Now, here's the crazy thing. After they lose him, they end up going to sleep. When they go to sleep. Jennifer goes missing. The, the friend of Jennifer is crying out for her. 
And then in the midst of crying out for Jennifer, she looks at the trail and sees the body print of Jennifer being dragged. The man got Jennifer. Saints, watch this. As long as Jennifer was awake, the man couldn't access her. As long as Jennifer had her eyes open, the man did not possess her body. As long as Jennifer was not sleeping, the man could not take her hostage. Watch this, saints. So time goes and goes. The woman and her son are trying to get out the woods. Jennifer is done taken away. They're looking on the map. They run out of food. Here's the thing. When you run out of food, it becomes easier for Satan to access you. Satan uses spiritual famine for mental damage to back you into a corner. She lost food for her and her son. And then they started arguing because when there's no food, there's argument. When there's no food, there's disagreement because it's the word that brings unity. When there's no food, which is doctrine when there's no food there's no togetherness when there's no food there's no ability to resist the devil so watch this her and her son they don't have no food her and her son start arguing he called us some names as a matter of fact he didn't call her no name but he had used something <laughs> he said some thing things all right now all right. So all of a sudden they run into the enemy. and He just staring at them from the top of a rock of a tree. He does not say anything to to her, but she's shouting at him. Let me show you something. He does not flinch. He does not even move. Here's what I want you to see. The devil is not moved by people that does not have the food of the Lord in their system. If you don't got the word of God in you, it does not matter what you say or how you shout. Huh? It's nothing that you're going to say or shout. That's going to make the enemy bow because when there's no food, he not afraid of wordlessness. The word of God is divine authority. So if he don't see the word in you, even if you shout at the enemy, nothing changes. Now, here's the thing. This girl was shouting at the enemy. But the enemy did not move because he was not moved by the fact that they, they did not have any food inside of them. And that food is the doctrine of God, the word of God. Now, let's go deeper. Inside of the movie, there comes a time when now they're traveling to get out of the woods and they get sleepy. It's nighttime. So the woman falls asleep. Here we go again, part two. She falls asleep. And when she falls asleep, there's a shadow standing over her. It is the man that took Jennifer standing in front of her when she falls asleep. The son falls asleep as well. And he drags her body away from the tent. Now, it is very amazing that the Bible uh, in Psalm 27 talked about the tent, the pavilion of the Lord and the tent of the Lord. And both of them were dragged away from the tent. Now, here's what I want you to see. 
Jennifer was dragged away when she went to sleep. Her friend with the son is dragged away when she falls asleep. In both instances, the devil is not able to take them until they fall asleep, which shows you that sleeping is a realm that causes your angel to lose the battle to a demon. Number one, write that down. Sleeping is a weapon that Satan uses to defeat your angel in the spirit realm because your angel cannot go beyond where you are mentally. Your angel cannot go beyond where you are spiritually. So if you at grade one, even though your angel got grade five abilities, it can't use it until you get from grade one. It has to use grade one abilities because that's where you're at. Where you're at in the spirit is equivalent to the authority of your angel. So if you're in struggle, so is your angel. If you're in frustration, so is your angel. If you're in bitterness, so is your angel. It's in the same place. It's compatible to the same place that you're at. It's equivalent to the same place that you're at mentally, spiritually. Write that down, number one. Sleeping is a weapon to make your angel lose the fight against the demon. Your angel gets defeated by a demon when you're asleep. Your angel loses the battle to a demon when you're sleeping. Oh my God. Here's the crazy thing. This was the very same thing that Jesus kept telling Peter to not go to sleep. Why was Jesus continually telling Peter, don't go to sleep, watch, pray, don't go to sleep, watch and pray? Why did he keep on telling him not to go to sleep? Because once he went to sleep, his angel lost the fight against the demon. So watch, when Peter gets attacked by the demon, he loses the battle and he denies Jesus three times. Romans chapter 13, verse 11. What I'm telling you is divine knowledge from heaven. What I'm teaching you is end time wisdom. And I'm giving you grace to not miss heaven. Romans chapter 13, verse 11. It says, and that knowing the time that now it is high time to be awake out of your sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we first believed. I'm in, I'm in Romans chapter 13, verse 11, which is a New Testament scripture. It says, knowing the time that now it is a high time to awake out of your sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we first believed, meaning that the coming of Jesus is very close. So the text is telling you, you better awake or else if you sleep when he returns, you're not going to be found worthy to go with him. So saints, number one, sleeping. I need everybody to share this broadcast Bahama mama, your mama, Osama mama, Obama mama, everybody. Bahama da dama da dama da dama da dama da 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 I said, I'm in the home of San Diego, the home of the dustiness. I said, Lord, help me find these. How am I find this up in here? I, how am I going to do that, Jesus? How? Huh? How am I going to do that? The police cars looking all old and whatnot. <laughs> Man, they got, they got the uh, 90210 police cars up in California. Huh? Huh? You understand? Uh. They got, they got the robocops. 
when you drive past a cop in California, the car go. <laughs> you be looking at your car like, hey, I just got this. What? I just got this. I just got this. Like in space, I thought the police were pulling me over earlier today. I had my music banging. I'm like, hey, I'm going to jail. I'm going to jail, Jesus. I'm praying in the car. What, what am I doing? I ain't do, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't, I'm going below the speed limit, all of that. The police rolled up behind me. I looked back. I said, he ain't got no lights on. So I pulled over to the right. I skipped him, pulled over to the right. And I, I was sitting right there. He drove right past me. I said, Jesus, that's the devil. I ain't going to pull me over with no lights on. Then the Lord had to tell me that that's his car, man. That's his car making all that noise, man. It wasn't no doggone pullover. That too fast. No trick daddy. It wasn't none of that, saints. What was taking place was that the cop needed a new vehicle. That's what happened, man. He needed to come to Texas and get a new vehicle. That's what, that's what was going on right there. Now, Saints, I understand some of y'all said uh, Facebook and, and Instagram broke. Good! How many of y'all know Facebook and Instagram not working? <laughs> hey, hey, who, who you think did it? <laughs> hey, hey. Who you think did it? <laughs> hey, 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 let me just say this. Never mind, I'll, I'll leave that to me and Jesus' secret. They was kung fu fighting. Everybody was kung fu fighting. Hey, kung fu fighting. Kung fu fighting. Number one, what stops, what stops your angels from winning the battle is sleeping. You see, I got to look over my back because it be crackheads. So my windows tinted and whatnot, and still be the crack is up there. You know. Shoot. <laughs> so I ain't getting no deep revelation when I do like this. <laughs> Just making sure I got my Glock, my key Glock. <laughs> they be talking to themselves, man. Bro, I don't know how they do it. The other day, the man was up there. He was just dancing, just happy. It wasn't no music playing. So I was in my car. I tried to turn the music up so he could have something to dance to, for real, for real. He tried to turn the music up so... So while he was dancing, he could have something really dancing to, so... And saints, them them crackheads be having couples. They they be having boyfriend and girlfriend. Like they be arguing with each other. Like the man was telling his girl, "You gonna have to get out of here today." I looked over at him like, "Listen, where's she gonna get out of? Like the 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 the, the, the branches is free. <laughs> you can't kick nobody out no branches. You can't kick them out no forest. Like the forest is free. Like." What you gonna call the police? Like, you can't kick out no branches. Like that's that's where she live. Like, what what you gonna do with her? Like, you can't make her leave no branches. Like, them branches is 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 free. It's free. Like, you can't make her pay no rent for no branches. Like, she can stay in the branches for how long she want. Like, you can't tell her that them branches belong to you. Like, you you not paying no rent for them branches. 
like y'all, you, you, I mean, you gonna have to work it out because them branches is accessible to her too. Like you can't just evict her from no branches now. Them branches, them branches is 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 is, is open, accessible to both parties. Both parties have access to both branches. You can't take one party out the branch and tell the other party that the branch is okay for them. Craig is beginning to argument. Thompson, you're going to have to leave this branch today. But but both of them branches is for both parties. <laughs> uh, both of them is for both parties. You can't kick them out. She got the same right to be in the branches as you got the same right to be in the branches. Both of y'all got the right to be in the branches. You can't chase out the branches. What you want to evict them? Now, sleeping, I just dealt with it, Romans chapter 13, verse 11. It causes your angel to lose the battle in the spirit realm to demons. <laughs> <laughs> and this is what takes place, sons and daughters, when you're sleeping. What does that mean? That you lack the wisdom of the motive of Satan. Listen. Watch this here. You can get into a road rage, right? But you don't really know what's the root of the road rage. That person might got a gun. And Satan want them to shoot you. So you might be going all in. Man, I'm from 419, man. This how we run it. I'm from 419. You not going to cross me. You know how we run it, 419. And while you 419-ing, the motive of Satan is to get you shot. So sleeping makes you blind to the motive of Satan. Because here's what happens. The whole motive is not just you stand your ground. The motive is to get you shot. You understand? So the motive of Satan is to get you shot by a gun. All right? It's more to it than just a road incident. When you sleep, at, see, what Peter did not see that Satan's motive was to get him to deny Jesus three times. So here's the goal. I need to get you to go to sleep right now. Because even though you think I'm just taking a nap, I'm just getting my rest, I'm just getting my, I, I, I'm tired, it's nighttime. That's what I'm supposed to do, man. I'm supposed to go to sleep. Like I'm just, I'm just doing what we all supposed to do. I, I got work in the morning. I, I, I got to go take my kids to school tomorrow. I got to make sure I'm clocking on time. It seemed like it's so innocent. But this is going to lead to the connectivity of denying Jesus three times. So what I'm telling you is that sleep makes you blind to what is going to produce in your decisions later on. So always remember this. That you can sleep in every area of your life and it can cause destruction in the future. When you're not sowing, you're sleeping financially. So you might got finances good today, but you may not know five months later. You might lose everything and need the mercy of God. You may need you might lose everything in five months and you might need the grace of God. And now destruction has come upon you. But you didn't see it because you were sleeping. So the seed may not have been a major thing for you. But now you're in a place of desperation. Huh? Now you're in a place where you need financial and money mercy. But the sleep did not reveal that to you when you were sleeping financially. You understand? So... Sleep can enter any area of your life. Mental sleeping. If you don't plead the blood of Jesus over your mind, if you don't read the word of God, if you don't read the word of God, I promise you, you are going to miss the Holy Spirit. I promise you. If you don't take the time out of the day, not one time to read the word, 
I promise you in the days to come, something will let you miss the Holy Ghost. It's those moments when nothing is happening when you need to be exercising godliness the most. When, when nothing is taking place, you're not under attack, there's no warfare, you have peace, uh, everything good, that's when you need to be on your P's and Q's. See, saints, let me just tell you something. I don't, I don't do spiritual warfare because of warfare. I do spiritual warfare before the warfare even show up. So how, how am I going to lose? How? How are you going to lose if your bullets are already loaded and you are already in shooting stands? And the opposing army come on the scene and principalities and powers and rulers of the darkness of this age and spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places are after your mind, will, and emotions. How are you going to lose? If you already have done the weapons of your warfare that are mighty in God to the pulling down the strongholds, how are you going to be a, a victim in the fight? Saints, I want you to see something in the battle. The Bible said that Achan heard prophet Joshua tell him, King Joshua tell him not to take anything from the camp. The Bible said that Achan went inside the camp and he took all these objects from the very place that prophet Joshua, King Joshua told him not to take it. The Bible said that Joshua went to battle and he lost the battle. The Bible then said that Joshua cried out to God and God said, get thee up. The reason why you lost the battle is because Achan did what you told him not to do. Joshua gets up, sees what God shows him, sets Achan, his wife, his children on fire. And then he went to the battle and won the battle. Here's the revelation that I want you to catch. If, if Achan was the reason why Joshua lost the battle, there's always an Akon in your mind, in your emotions, that causes you to lose the soulish battle. There's always an Akon in your body that causes you to lose your health battle. There's always an Akon in your finances that causes you to lose the financial battle. There's always an Akon in your decisions that make you lose the will battle. So you have to find Akon and what? Set it on fire. What's the fire? The fire of the Holy Ghost. It's the fire of the Holy Ghost. So this is the thing that's going to set the Akon on fire. The spirit of the Lord. And once Joshua did that. He won the battle. Now, you know, Joshua means Yeshua, which is Jesus. So here's the revelation. The Bible said in John, uh, in Acts chapter 10, verse 38, how God anointed Jesus with the Holy Spirit and with power. Watch that. OK, let's go to uh, Matthew chapter three, verse 11. It says, there's coming one mightier than I, which talking about Jesus, Yeshua, and he shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. OK, now we're dealing with the story of Joshua burning up Akon because the Holy Spirit and fire mean that Jesus was anointed by the father to not have any acons in his life. Acons is anything that will stop you from winning the battle. Acons is anything that will remove you from your position. Acon is anything that will cause you to be defeated. So the story of Joshua was the story of Yeshua which is Jesus. 
how God anointed Jesus with the Holy Spirit and with fire. You understand? And then the battle was won. Now, uh, Joshua won the battle for the children of Israel. Yeshua won the battle for you. So Yeshua removed everything from your camp. So when you have a mental battle, a financial battle, an emotional battle, a physical battle, you could win. So number one, we dealt with sleeping is what causes your angel to lose the battle in the spirit realm. Sleeping. We dealt with Romans 13, 11. Number two, what causes you to lose the battle, your angel to lose the battle in the spirit realm is Akon. Write that down. Number two. See, I'm real deep on this because what I'm doing is I'm taking the wisdom anointing, I'm bringing it into scripture and I'm, I'm bringing it in correlation to the scripture so it could be tattooed on your soul. These key points. I dealt with sleeping. You can remember Peter in the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus telling him, watch and pray lest he fall into temptation, not going to sleep. I'm dealing with Akon, which is the second one, which I'm dealing with the fact that Akon caused Joshua to lose the battle in the spirit realm. Now, now Joshua had already lost the battle in the spirit realm. That's why he lost it in the natural realm. Because you don't win battles in the natural. You win them in the spirit. So if you don't win it in the spirit, you can't win in the natural. So watch this here. Do you know so many people are trying to stop a sniffing crack? But sniffing crack is not a natural. You got to go into the spirit and deal with the spirit of crack. You understand? And when you deal with the spirit of crack, the natural crack that you've been sniffing, you're going to lose the desire for it. Because, saints, everything that you do is built off a of desire. Somebody that's 800 pounds, they have a demon. They have demons, legions inside of them that cause them to imagine food all the time. So they lust after food all the time. So they're always imagining food and the demon is always giving them pictures. Uh, eat this big old cheeseburger. Uh, it be this big old cupcake. Uh, it's going to melt in your mouth. Uh, if you eat the buttercream cake, uh, buttercream crock skin, crock skin. Get two donuts, two donuts. Get two, two donuts, two donuts. Two more donuts, two more donuts. Don't eat all the rice right there. Eat some more rice, some more. Don't eat the five chicken. Get about five more chickens. Eat these five more chickens. Eat these five more chickens. Five more, five more chickens. Eat more, five more chickens. You got five more chickens. So there's a demon talking to them. And then they're having pictures of what the demon's saying to them. And then they want to eat it. Get some more hot sauce on this burrito. Hot sauce on this burrito. Get two more burritos. Some more hot sauce on the burrito. Get do two more burritos. There's a spirit talking to them. So they're not just eating food. There's a spirit talking to them to eat the food. So here's what has to happen. They can't just stop eating. But somebody can go into the spirit realm and break off the spirit of gluttony. If I break the spirit of gluttony, they can't, they can't keep operating in that. They'll start losing weight and those legions of spirit will leave them alone. Saints, when you see people get 800 pounds, they got a lot of spirits on them. And those legions of demons are fighting them. The same way if somebody get anorexia. You see them models how they get anorexia and when they try to eat, they start throwing up their food. That's a demon called anorexia. So watch, if, if I go into the spirit realm and break the spirit of anorexia off of them, then they're going to be able to eat food without throwing up. 
But as long as the spirit of anorexia can live, they'll continually throw up their food and that spirit will always make them an enemy to food. You know, there's some people that hate food. There's some people that have made food their enemy. If you show them any food, they'll hate you. So number two, Akon. Akon makes you, your angel, lose battles in the spirit realm. Akon causes your angel to lose battles in the spirit realm. 